What did he say, exactly? Humiliation heats my cheeks, so I take another gulp of water. For starters, he said he didn't like how I bossed him around. Whitney winces. I am his boss, I protest. Or I was. Maybe there's a lesson there, Danny asks. I snort. Don't sleep with the help? Or with surfer dudes? You are a bit intimidating, Vi, Whitney says. I mean, I'm afraid of you sometimes, and I've known you since we wore training pants. Well, that's just stupid. Vi, Danny admonishes. Proving my point, Whitney mutters. I roll my eyes. Sorry. I guess Lance won't have to be intimidated by me anymore. He's leaving tonight. Whoa, Danny's brows go up. How long has he been planning this? I don't know. I read over Lance's scrawl again. It just says some guy told him he was driving to California and Lance realized that if he didn't go for his dream, he'd always regret it. So he's going to Hollywood to be an actor. Jesus, Dylan says on a half laugh, half groan that has me wishing I could make that word come out of his mouth with lust instead of pity. When I meet his sidelong gaze, he apologizes. Sorry, don't mean to be eavesdropping, but he pauses for a moment to quickly look me up and down. What an idiot. He was a jerk, Whitney adds, patting my arm. He's not a total asshole just kind of an airhead, a boy bimbo. I do my best to laugh it all off. I guess it's my bad for trying to date above my pay grade. My neighbor shakes his head and takes a sip of his beer. The last thing L.A. needs is another actor wannabe. A truism, but it sounds more personal for him. At least you won't have to see him again. Danny says, straightening and whipping a bar towel over her shoulder. Unless he actually gets work. Then I'll have to see him on the boob tube. With my luck, he'll book my favorite soap. I'd been enjoying the show put on by the spitfire redhead next to me at the bar, but when she tells her friends about the guy that left her to go west to be an actor, I suddenly need more space than the crowded bar allows for. Excusing myself as if I'm going to the restroom, I veer instead toward the lobby and the door that leads to the beach. When I checked into this oceanfront hotel two days ago, expecting to be able to watch the sunset over the waves, I had to remind myself that I'm now on the left coast. Lucky for me, instead of the Atlantic, my room faces the other body of water that flanks the island called Wrightsford Beach. In the time since my plane landed in the Wallington Airport, I've heard several locals call it the Inner Coastal Waterway, even though the sign reads Intracoastal. One of many quirks I'm sure I'll discover during my stay in the city, some are calling the Hollywood of the East. After I find a lonely spot on the hotel deck, I lean on the faded wooden railing. A few deep breaths while staring at the great expanse of the ocean always calms me down, and after a few moments, I feel less agitated. Unfortunately, that gives my dad's voice full reign inside my head. You've got commitment issues, son. In the past four years, you've quit more jobs than I'll ever have. After I finally graduated from college, which took an extra year because I transferred twice. I found a job that was as far away from Hollywood and my father as possible. It's true that I didn't last long at the first company, nor the ones that followed it. Each and every position I found was mind-numbingly tedious. Each time I moved on, so sue me. The joke my dad tells ad nauseum is that they based the movie Reality Bites, or Singles, or 